City of Salem, City, City Council, Council will hold the regular meetings, meetings via remote, remote participation, participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of, of the Act of the 2022 2nd and in person on February 23rd, 2023, 7 p.m. in the City Council Chamber, 93 Washington Street, second floor, for the purpose of discussing any and all businesses. Members of the public may attend this in person or remotely via Zoom by clicking on the website link below. Go to the website link by Zoom and enter the webinar ID 876-8031-0469 followed by the meeting password noted about if it is necessary. Or by telephone, participant can dial a toll-free number at 877 853-5257 or 888-475-4499. When prompted, enter the meeting I webinar ID 87-8031-20469 and follow the instruction in the joint meeting. For those dialing in, you might press star nine to raise your hand to speak in a sign up for a public testimony or participate, participate in public hearing portion of the agenda. The public might also watch the meeting live on SATV on channel 22. A regular meeting of the City Council was held in person and remotely via Zoom on Thursday, February 23rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. for the purpose of transacting on any and all business. Notice in this meeting was posted on February 21st, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Councilor Ascent, Councilor Stark, and Councilor Harper. Councilor Dominguez preside. Councilor Pernasco moved to dispense with the reading of this record of the previous meeting. Are those in favor? Are those opposed? So voted. Public testimony. Oh. Bear with me. Uh, President Domingo requests that everyone please rise for recite the Pledge of the Alliance led by Councillor Barella. Public testimony. We have two people who have signed in to speak tonight, one in person and one by Zoom. Uh, at this point, we ask uh, Mr. Steve Capantis to come to the podium. Please state your name and address for the record and speak to the microphone. Good evening, Steve Capantis, 23A, Wisteria Street, Salem, Mass. I want to talk about the meeting that happened last night and another failure with us holding remote Zoom meetings. These are issues that are happening frequently, and they're happening, quite frankly, because we don't have proper procedures and protocols in place. We haven't provided training to the very people that are running the Zoom meetings, and it's leading to public not being able to ask questions, not even able to enter the meeting to attend a public meeting. And we need to take steps to correct this. Today, I sent Council of Varela my open meeting law violation regarding last night's issues and have asked for certain corrective and preventative actions to be taken. They're not a huge ask, they're not a heavy lift. Quite frankly, that meeting needs to happen again, or at least be replayed again at a public meeting. Invite the gentleman back that gave the presentation. And then the other one is preventative actions that we need to take. When we post the links to Zoom meetings, they can be verified and validated the very same day that they're posted on the web. They can be checked 48 hours before. They can be checked when you make an amendment to a meeting. It's obvious something is failing there. I won't go into all the other failures that we've had, but this is not just at the city council and subcommittee, it's all of our committees and boards. So um, I'm asking through that open meeting law complaint uh, that we get something in the works so that 
remote access is available for everybody. Otherwise, it's it's not worth having. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Capani. Now we have Damien Jero on Zoom. Mr. Jero, if you hear us, please uh, raise your hand. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. And please stay your name and address for the record. record. Thank you, Domingo. Um, I was going to have you read it out, but my voice is uh, Councillor Domingo. Sorry, but my uh, voice has come back after a bit of an illness. So thank you, uh, Damien Jarrett, Fire of Hillside Avenue. Uh, and it, really, just to reiterate the complaint that, that Steve just made, um, you know, yesterday people were unable to access um, this particular meeting, which had, you know, some some pretty big ramifications uh, where it came to even the legal uh, the decriminalization of heroin uh, which I think that a lot of people will feel very passionately about a lot of people weren't able to access that meeting uh, so I think it's highly important uh, to reiterate what uh, Steve Kapadis just said that we, we need to address replaying this meeting um, re-inviting uh, the, the the activist in question that is that is requesting that we pass this resolution uh, so that we can have a, a proper open dialogue and people that weren't able to take part in the debate are able to take part in that debate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yer. And uh, now we now go, we go to, to hearings. hearings. Councillor Wanton Fair. Fair. Do you want me to read it? Oh, thank you. Um, we're going to, uh, thank you, uh, President Dominguez. We're going to um, vote to um, continue this public hearing to March 9, 7 p.m. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are those in favor on Carson Watson Field move? This, oh, second by Councilor Coins. Sorry. Okay. Are those in favor on, uh, on the matter of... Uh, Sending this to uh, the recommendation by Councilor Watson Field to the next uh, date. Are those in favor, please raise your hand. Are those opposed? <laughs> Mary Carries. Further hearings. We have an order from National Grid to install one jointly owned pole on Endicott Street. Councilor Watson Field. Um, we're going to transfer this to Councilor Masello. Thank you. Thank you, President Dominguez. Um, I'm moving to continue this to June 23rd um, because of some outstanding issues with a tree. Do so I have any second? Second by Councilor Coyne. 22nd. 20, could be the 22nd. Are those in favor? Are those opposed? Mayor carries. Further hearings? Councilor Watson Fair. Hold on, one second. You're right, you're right. One it's second. the 22nd, just to be clear. Hold on. Okay. We have an order from National Grid to install one pole on Bridge Street, and this is pole number 598. Uh, thank you, President Dominguez. We're going to motion to continue this to March 9th, 7 p.m. as well. Are those, anybody second? Second by Councilor Varela. Are those in favor? Are those opposed? Mary Carey. <laughs> Appointments and reappointments. We have held from the last meeting the mayor's appointment of James Bostick of 32 Bar Street, Salem, Mass., to serve on the City of Salem Public Art Commission with a term to expire on February 9th, 2024. Councilor Marcello. Thank you, President Dominguez. I move for confirmation by roll call vote. Under discussion. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to say, Mr. Bostic. Oh, you moved over here, Mr. Bostic. Um, his resume is is um, outstanding. He's been an active um, resident in Salem for many years. He's currently on Destination Salem, the Salem Arts Association, and and he owns and operates the Gallows Hill Arts Artist Studios. Um, I think this is a, a good a good board for him to be on. Uh, any further discussion? Councillor Klein. Thank you, President Dominguez. Uh, I just want to say I've known uh, Mr. Bostic for a long time, and uh, Councillor Prosniewski and I had the 
honor of serving with him for many years on the No Place for Hate, when it was the No Place for Hate Committee, the Human Rights Coalition. And in addition to being uh, involved in all the things that we did, he designed all our artwork and brochures and is just a remarkable person to work with. So I think he'll be a great asset for the commission. Any further discussion? Councilor Pernowski? Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, also um, want to thank Mr. Bostic um, for all the work that he's done in the past. He's continued to spread himself out on many committees, always always in a very favorable and positive manner. He's, he's helped the city where a lot of people have, don't, even, don't even know. So I'm, I'm glad to see uh, this mayor's appointment and welcome him to the new position. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councilor Watson Fair? Just to echo everything that has been said in the room, but um, my own personal opinion is that everything that Jim Bostic touches is made better. So I'm really excited that he'll be on this commission. Thanks, Jim, for your um, ongoing service. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, can you call the roll? Council Watson Felt? Yes. Council Varela? Yes. Council Prosniewski? Yes. Council Masillo? Yes. Council Merkel? Yes. Council McLean? Yes. Councilor Cohen? Yes. And Councilor Dominguez? Yes. Thank you. On the major appointment of James Barty to the Public Art Commission, we have a voting family, none voting, not the matter carries. Congratulations. <laughs> Councilor Marcelo. Thank you, President Dominguez. I move to suspend the rules to allow Mr. Bostic to address the council. Thank you, City Council. Uh, I'm overwhelmed by some of the nice, a lot of the nice words that I heard from you tonight. Uh, I appreciate the recognition for my involvement in our community. Uh, I'm honored for the opportunity to support the City of Salem and the efforts of the Public Art Commission. Um, I followed the great work that the Public Art Commission has been doing for many years, and uh, I think that. Having a community like Salem that supports its creative efforts, uh, especially with public art, public art provides inspiration to our everyone who lives, visits, and works here. Um, I'm very pleased to be able to help forward those efforts. Um, as a designer and an artist, my work with the, uh, the Gallows Hill Studios, Salem Arts Commission, Destination Salem, uh, I see a lot of feedback around, you know, people aren't just coming here for the, the history of the witches um, in our maritime, but over, about a third of the people in our surveys have told us that they come here for the art. Uh, Peabody Assets, our public art, our artist rail. Um, it's a great effort from the city, and I love seeing that forwarded. Uh, I look forward to bringing my own community art experience as an artist to the city of Salem and helping to enhance the work that the Public Art Commission is doing. So I thank you all very much. Thank you. For their appointments and your appointments. With the mayor's appointment of Ronald Bertham to serve as a constable with the term to expire on February 25th, 2026. Councilor Marcelo. Thank you, Councilor Dominguez. Um, I move that this be received and filed. On the discussion? No discussion. On the motion of Councilor Marcelo, are those in favor? Are those opposed? So voted. <laughs> Further appointments and reappointments. We have the mayor's appointment of John Walter Ray of Ada Amanda Way Salem to serve as a constable with the term to expire on April 1st, 2026. Councilor Marcello. Thank you, President Dominguez. I move that this be received and filed. Any discussion? No discussion. Thank you. On the matter of uh, Councilor Marcello, any, any further? On the matter of Councilor Marcello, all those in favor? Are those opposed? Support it. 
communication from the mayor. We've been ordered that the sum of $58,632.31 be approved within the Retirement Stabilization Fund Vacation Sick Leave Buyback Account to be expended for the fiscal year 2023 contractional buyback of a fire department employee. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Council President, and move for suspension of the rules. Seeing none objection, Councilor McLean, uh, suspension of the rule. All those in favor? All those opposed? Councilor McLean? Thank you. I further move for adoption. Under discussion? Uh, this is one of the usual retirement buybacks that we have for a member of our city who is uh, leaving their service. So as always, we, we thank this person for their service, particularly as they are retiring from the fire department and, and we're glad that they're going safely. Any further discussion? Councilor Marcella? Thank you, President. Um, I want to note that um, Aaron is uh, leaving and there are no more women on the fire department. And that to me is, is um, we need to do better. We need to figure out a way to attract women to this profession, both nationally, statewide, and in Salem. Um, and I will help in any way I can, but we need to somehow get more women to join the fire department and the police department, but especially the fire department right now. Any further discussion? Councilor Pernoski? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I think most of us know Erin Bonito uh, as Erin Griffin uh, from the Griffin family from down the willows. Uh, she gave her lifetime uh, to her, as a career uh, on the fire department, uh, stellar uh, employee for the city of Salem. And I just want to uh, congratulate her and thank her for her years and years of service uh, to Salem. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, and the Councilor McLean motion, all those in favor? Are those opposed? So voted. Thank you. Further communications from the mayor. We've been ordered that per Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 64, which allows for municipality to pay for prior fiscal year invoices using current fiscal year appropriations by two thirds vote of the city council, we request the sum of $399 of outstanding fiscal year 22 invoices is here be allowed paid from the fiscal year 2023 police department budget. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Council President. I move for suspension of the rules. Uh, uh, Seeing none objection on the Councilor McLean suspension of the rule, all those in favor? Are those opposed? Mary Kay. Councilor McLean. Thank you. I further move for adoption by roll call vote. Any discussion? Yes, thank you. Um, Unfortunately, this is another one of those items that really should have been paid already, but managed to slip through the cracks into the current year. Um, this time it appears to be uh, not due to a lack of diligence on our part, but simply that an invoice was never issued uh, by the company with which we're contracting. So when we received it, uh, we were ready to pay it, and so we are going to do so. Any further discussion? Seeing none, and the motion of Councilor McLean, uh, Madam City Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council Watsonfelt? Yes. Council Varela? Yes. Council Prozniski? Yes. Council Marcillo? Yes. Council Marco? Yes. Council McLean? Yes. Council Cohen? Yes. And Council Dominguez? Yes. And the matter by Councilor McLean, we have a voting affirmative and none on the, the, the known. The matter carries. Further communication from the mayor. We are in order to accept the donation of $1,200 from Ronald Harrison. The donation is to be deposited into the Park and Rec's donation fund for a standard cardinal bench. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Council President. I move for adoption. On your discussion? Thank you. Um, no discussion. We just thank Ronald Harrison for the donation. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on the motion of Councilor McLean to accept the $1,200 from Ronald Harrison. All those in favor? All those opposed? Mayor Curry, thank you. Mayor's information page. We have a communication from the mayor to give an update on Section 3A compliance and inclusionary zoning. Councilor Marcelo. 
Thank you, President. I move that this be received and filed. Okay, under discussion. Thank you, President. Um, this is this goes into an explanation of uh, inclusionary zoning and things that we need to work on. There's been a there's been a, an outcry for. Um, an inclusionary zoning ordinance, but with the new housing um, around the the um, transportation, that new law, um, it there's limitations to what an inclusionary zoning um, ordinance can do, and so they just want to take some more time to do some analysis and figure out the best way to move forward. Um, that's it. Thank you. Any further discussion? See none. And the motion of Councillor Marcillo. Are those in favor? Are those opposed? So voted. Motions, audit, and resolution. Councillor Klein. Yes. In City Council, February 23. Wait for reading. So I have a second. Wait for reading. So, Councillor Coyne? Yes, I move that this is adopted by roll call vote. Under discussion? Uh, thank you, uh, President Dominguez. So, uh, last year, we voted on exactly the same uh, home rule petition. It's petitions to general court. And to just briefly explain it, um, and, and it was passed 11 to nothing, um, Salem has an opportunity to be uh, one of the 10 communities as part of a pilot program that was established by the climate bill that the legislature and Governor Baker signed last summer. And it would enable us, if we're accepted, to write an ordinance uh, to uh, prohibit in whatever manner uh, the ordinance gets passed past uh, fossil fuel installations in the future. Um, there's no rule attached to this. It doesn't guarantee that we're in it. There's already 25 communities that have been considered. And just to give a little bit of context, um, the BRICS was uh, built uh, with the electric heating and cooling without any incentives from the government. Um, Lee Fort Terrace, um, the uh, CDC Lighthouse uh, developments, and uh, potentially the Canal Street Station or Bertini project would all be electric, just to give some context. So hopefully we can vote for this, uh, and the mayor will sign it, and then we'll get it filed uh, by our state rep and state senator. Any further discussion, Councilor Watson Fair? Thank you, President Dominguez, and first, my apologies, Councilor Cohen, for not having an opportunity to connect with him prior to this meeting, but um, I did touch base with the city solicitor on this, and she um, had mentioned that she hadn't seen it very recently, and she just was would be more comfortable just having a little bit of time to just revisit, so um, I was going to offer a friendly amendment that we continue this just to the March 9 meeting. I am in favor of it, but um, I just wanted to, to bring that forward. Thank you. Councilor Cohen? Yes. Uh, uh, I, I do not accept that for this reason. When I wrote this resolution, with this home rule petition, um, I took the language to the city solicitor. She actually wrote the language, the petition, uh, before it was submitted, and there's a timing issue. We need to get this filed in the next week. So I'm going to ask this council to vote on this today, just like we voted 11 to nothing before. And as everyone on this uh, body remembers, I reached out to everyone and spoke to everyone individually, uh, as well as the mayor. So um, I appreciate the friendly amendment, but because the city solicitor actually wrote the language and we have a timing issue to get into the queue, I'm going to ask that this body vote for this tonight. Any further discussion? Uh, we have a friendly amendment on the table. Are we going to keep it up? I mean, uh, okay. So on the motion of Councillor Cohen, uh, can you please? There is a second on the motion on the floor. Council Watts without. Was that a motion you made? <laughs> Just for clarification for the public's awareness, I made a friendly amendment, which he had declined. I can now make a motion, which I, I choose not to. I'll be voting present. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. On the motion of Councilor Coyne, Madam City Clerk, can you please call the, call, the roll? Council Watson-Felt. Present. 
Council Varela? Yes. Council Prasniewski? Yes. Council Masillo? Yes. Council Merkel? Yes. Council McLean? Yes. Council Cohen? Yes. And Council Dominguez? Yes. On the motion of Councillor Cohen, we had a member voting, seven of family, one person. Mary Carey. Thank you. Councillor Marcelo. Councillor Dominguez. Thank you, President Marcelo. City of Salem, resolution for Dominican Independence Day. Whereas the Dominican Flat Committee of Salem will celebrate the raising of the Dominican flag at Lafayette Park to celebrate the raising of the Dominican flag that marks the Dominican Republic's 179th anniversary of independence. And whereas the Dominican community has dedicated this celebration of independence to Dominican Republic men and women who had distinguished themselves in different disciplines in the city of Salem. And whereas the Dominican community has established itself throughout the efforts of many Dominicans in business, sports, politics, education, and many other disciplines, and have exhibited their pride, passion, and love of family, religions, and commitment to hard work. And whereas the Dominican community enriches the community, the city of Salem, by promoting the reach of the Dominican culture throughout music, dance, and art. And whereas the city of Salem recognizes that supporting the Latino community will lead to greater continued equality for all residents and help strength, strengthen our city. And whereas the Dominican flag raising will take place at Lafayette Park on Friday, February 24, 2023, at 5 p.m. in anticipation of the Dominican Independence Day. And whereas, and I'm sorry, and now, therefore, we, the Salem City Councilor and Mayor Robert K. McCarthy, do hereby proclaim February 27, 23, as Dominican Republic Independence Day, and call on all public officials, educators, librarians, and all Salem residents to observe this month with appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs here in Salem and beyond the borders of our Commonwealth. And I move for adoption by Roe Cobo. Councilor Dominguez moves for adoption by roll call vote under discussion. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, yes, uh, quickly, I just wanted to point out that we celebrate Dominican independence every day. As you know, the, the Dominican community is growing by far. We have many, many new members coming aboard, and we celebrate with a lot of pride. And we used to say this Dominican celebration is not only for Dominican descendants, it's for everyone who are here in the city of Salem that share the same pride and the same value that we share. So I just wanted to quickly uh, ask to suspend the rule to allow one of the members of the flag racing committee to say some word he choose to, if, he, if you allow to. Thank you. Seeing no objection. Thank you, everyone. My name is Jolene Noa, 53 Clark Street. And uh, I'm here to just say thanks to you guys to um, be a uh, prepared sailor for the day of the February 27th, that's the Dominican Independence Day. As you know, the 23% of the population in Salem are Latino. From that 23%, uh, we calculate at least 18 to uh, 18 to 19% are Dominican. So we grow up in Salem. We have business in Salem, and uh, we are very good. Uh, we have a lot of very good people and spend, uh, pay taxes and help the city. So we really appreciate you guys to declare that day uh, in Salem for the Dominican Independence Day. And at the same time, I would like to invite each one of you and the population 
television and the people see us on the TV to come and, uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday 23, and uh, park in, in the Lafayette Park in front of 135 Lafayette Street in the building. Right, we're gonna raise uh, the flag, Dominican flag over there. And after that, we're gonna be there for uh, about 10, 15 minutes because the weather is very cold tomorrow. So after that, we're raising the flag and singing our anthem, we're going to uh, 211 Lafayette Street, Salterstone School, and we have a big celebration over there. We're gonna have a recognition, some Latino community leader, and also we're gonna have our culture and uh, folklore from the Dominican Republic and also singing people are gonna come in and uh, enjoy the day. I hope you'll be with us. We're so happy to see all of you in the place, in our in our play, in our, in our activity, and uh, we would like you enjoy with us. That's that's the days we celebrate the, the, the Independence Day in the Dominican Republic, and I hope you be together with us and we can celebrate together. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you everyone tomorrow, and the people can see us on the TV tomorrow for a tour in Lafayette Park, and then at five o'clock in Salterstone School, um, 200, 211 Lafayette Street. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Cohen. Uh, thank you, President Marcillo, and I uh, want to thank Councillor Dominguez for bringing this in. Uh, the Dominican people are not only enrich our city, uh, they're part of what makes Salem great. Um, I do enjoy this every year. I try to attend every year. Um, and I do uh, want to pose a question through you to Mr. Noah. How come it's always on the coldest day of the year? <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you. I, I just want to say I'm happy to vote for this tonight, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow's events. <laughs> thank you. Any further discussion? On Councillor Dominguez's motion for adoption by roll call vote, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Council Watson felt yes. <laughs> Council Varela? Yes. Council Prosniewski? Yes. Council Masello? Yes. Council Merkel? Yes. Council McLean? Yes. Council Cohen? Yes. And Council Dominguez? Yes. On the motion for the Dominican Republic Independence Day resolution, we have eight counselors voting, eight in the affirmative, none in the negative. The matter carries. <laughs> Further motions and resolutions? Councillor Collins. Thank you, President Dominguez. In the year 2023, an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to traffic be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Salem as follows. Section 1, Chapter 42, Section 50B, Handicap Zone Limited Time is hereby amended by adding the following. Ocean Ave in front of number 69, Ocean Ave for a distance of 20 feet, handicap parking, limited time tow zone section two this ordinance shall take effect as provided by city charter and move adoption for first passage under discussion uh, thank you uh president dominguez so i was uh, uh, uh uh, Lieutenant Tucker of the police department reached out to me. Uh, the woman uh, who has applied for this has had two hip surgeries and, and problems navigating her driveway as there's elevated curb uh, curbing on both sides of the driveway. Uh, she does have a, a handicap placard uh, for her recovery, um, but it's important for the council to know that when she doesn't need um, the, the spot, um, it will come back to the council and we'll remove it she also understands, as uh, 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 Mayor McCarthy always says, that there's no guarantee that it will be a spot for her vehicle. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion by Councillor Cohen, are those in favor? Are those opposed? So about it. Further motions and resolution? Councillor Krasnowski. Thank you, President Dominguez. In the year 2023, an ordinance relative to traffic be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Salem as follows. Section 1, Section 51 of Article 5 be amended by asserting the, fo asserting the following. 
Lafayette Street, parking prohibited on certain streets easterly side from the intersection of Palmer Street extending southward for 45 feet. This or ordinance shall take effect as provided by city charter and I move for adoption by first passage. Under discussion. Thank you. Um, to pinpoint this location exactly, it's at the intersection of uh, Palmer and Lafayette Street. So those of us who frequently have traveled up Palmer Street and try to access Lafayette Street is uh, often um, encounter a vehicle parked on the corner, making it very dangerous trying to take a left-hand turn out of Palmer Street onto Lafayette Street. This change in the ordinance will remedy that by clearing the intersection for 45 feet, uh, making it a, a, a safer way to uh, enter Lafayette Street. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, and the motion of Councilor Prosnowski. All those in favor? All those opposed? So voted. For the motion and resolu resolution. Councilor Klein. Thank you, President Dominguez. In the year 2002. Wave the thank you so much. <laughs> Wave the reading. <laughs> Okay, if you go to page 253, <laughs> uh, I move for adoption for first passage. Oh, me, I'm sorry, I move that this is referred to the Ordinances, License, and Legal Affairs Committee. I stand corrected. Thank you so much. Under discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, although I do have a little bit to say, um, this was presented briefly at the Traffic and Parking Commission. Um, however, um, as Councilor Marcillo and I spoke about, um, there's more information that we need, and I think it would be appropriate for the uh, uh, Director Kucharski and others to present it uh, to the Council. Any further discussion? Councilor Marcello? Thank you, President Dominguez. Um, so I first want to say that I did talk to Mr. Kucharski about this, and I did tell him that it was going to probably go to committee. Um, and the reason is because I have a lot of questions. And I also want to say that I respect the members of the Traffic and Parking Commission, and I know that this is a voluntary gig, and um, it, there's a lot of stuff that happens there. But I was dismayed by the lack of data associated with this plan. Um, there's only three months of data for the meters. Um, there's three spaces currently taken up with a COVID trailer for testing, which is still there even though there's no testing since January. But for over a year now, there's been three spots used for that trailer. Um, there's regular use of those parking spaces for people getting tested, but I'm sure they're not putting money in the meter because they're standing right there and they're there at a certain time. And and if they see the meter person coming, they'll throw a quarter in, but I'm sure they're not paying for it. There's also regular use by patrons of the post office, um, diners in the area. The signs throughout the entire parking area are extremely confusing. Um, they're, Anyways, I'd also like to know who's asking for the permits. Are they downtown workers? Are they residents? Is it a mix? What's the percentage? Um, that if they're downtown workers, do they need it for seven days? We're now giving them a seven-day parking space. Um, so for that reason, I think that we need to do a lot more work before taking out all the rest of the 11 metered parking spaces. Um, and I will also say that the same goes for the next order of changing the fee, the monthly fee to $50. There was some data, but again, why not 100? Why not 75? Like there was no discussion. And I think that these kinds of discussions should be happening in the Traffic and Parking Commission. They should be asking for this data. It shouldn't be on the city council to have to go back and do all of this work. That's my opinion. I will take this up in Ola though. Any further discussion? Councilor Bernowski and then Councilor Watsafer. Thank you, President Dominguez. Um, Riley Plaza has gone through changes over the years, um, and but one thing that hasn't changed is that the people who have businesses um, around Riley Plaza have always depended on Riley Plaza for parking, and it's going to impact them directly. A lot of those businesses have been in Salem for years, and they plan on staying here for many years. So I think putting it back into committee gives them time and that's to, to, uh, to voice their opinion as to what um, what they feel is their needs uh, for Riley Plaza, and we should be listening to that. So I will be supporting to bring this back into committee and hearing from the public on this. Thank you. 
Councillor Wilson Fair. Uh, thank you, President Dominguez. I'm just going to um, echo everything that Councillor Mustillo and Councillor Prasniewski just said. And I would also add, um, you know, in the conversation that I watched on the Traffic and Parking Commission, there was also comment around where the nearest um, meters are still. And an area was pointed to in Ward 2 on the Gedney Street side where those meters are relatively new. And um, there is still a little pain about those to some of the small business owners there, particularly um, some hair studios and, and the like. So if we're increasing the stress of the use on those metered parkings, which are currently now um, being filled and paid by regular uh, attendees to these small businesses and services, I, you know, I think that that, that requires further um, conversation as well. I think it, this it sort of piggybacks on what Councillor Presnewski just said, that we need some more um, community engagement from the local businesses in that area. Thanks. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion of Councillor Cohen, all those in favor? Are those opposed? So what? Okay. Further motions and resolutions. Councillor Cohen. Thank you, President Dominguez. Ordered the fee to purchase a monthly parking permit to park in the Riley Plaza parking lot shall be $50. Permit holders will be per permitted to park in the lot Monday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I move that this is referred to the Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs Committee. Under discussion. Uh, for all the reasons uh, specified, especially by uh, Council Marcillo about the um, need for more information, um, I think it's important that we have a discussion in the committee. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on the motion is question of coin. All those in favor? All those opposed? So voted. Committee report. Mm -hmm. Councilor Varela. So sorry. I just before give me one second. There is any any further motion or order or resolution? Seeing none, let's go to committee report. Councilor Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Dominguez. Uh, we'll keep this brief. Uh, so we did have a meeting uh, last night uh, with uh, basically to discuss legalizing a certain plan. Thank you. City of Salem and City Council of February 23rd, 2023, the Committee on Public Health, Safety, and Environment, co host with the Committee of a Whole, to whom referred the matter, meet with Mr. James Davis of the Bay from the Bay Staters for Natural Medicine to discuss legalizing of certain plant medicines, has considered said matter, and would recommend the matter be kept in committee. On the discussion? On the setting of this report, on the discussion? We have to vote on it. Those in, um, on the setting of the report, those in favor? Opposed? And the adoption of the recommendation, Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Domingo. Apologies. Uh, so, yes, we had a meeting with Mr. James Davis, uh, as well as Dr. Miyabe Shields, PhD, as well as Brendan O'Connor of uh, Cambridge Bio. Uh, Biohealth. Uh, so yeah, we had a great meeting. Uh, there's a lot to go over when it comes to the consideration of decriminalizing or at least deprioritizing uh, entheogenic plant medicines. Um, however, we did kind of have a little bit of an issue with the meeting. Um, it was not publicly posted appropriately in time. Uh, we do have a uh, open meeting law uh, rep, uh, complaint as well. Um, I just want to let the general public know apologies on this. Um, we are going to have another committee meeting about this. We had quite a few counselors that were absent and I am 100% uh, confident we can get uh, do this correctly. Uh, we can definitely get Mr. James Davis uh, and our Issue. Sorry. Isn't it a technical issue? So, due to a technical issue. So, with 
our next meeting, uh, we will not to say redo this, but there's a lot of room for discussion to consider this. So with that, uh, with the next scheduled meeting, which will be within two weeks, um, we look forward to uh, continuing this dialogue. Thank you. Any further discussion, Councilor Carney? Thank you, President. Uh, uh, I echo that it was a very good thing. Thank you, President Dominguez. I echo that it was an informative meeting uh, and look forward for them to come back. I do want to mention that um, uh, Police Chief uh, Miller also was uh, part of the meeting, and uh, that's a, a, an important component of moving forward. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion of Councilor Lorella to keep it in committee, all those, all those in favor? Are those opposed? So what? Communication from the mayor. Um, I mean, communication from city officials, I'm sorry. That's okay. We have an election order submitted by the city clerk for the special preliminary election to be held on March 28, 2023. Councilor Pronoski. Thank you, President Dominguez. In the City Council, February 23rd, 2023, ordered that the meetings of the qualified voters of the City of Salem be held in several voting precincts in the city at the polling place designated here and after on Tuesday, March 28th, 2023, for the purpose of casting votes in the city's special preliminary election for the election of candidates for the following office. Mayor to fill the vacancy due to the resignation of Kimberly Driscoll. Be it further ordered that the following places be and hereby are designated as polling places for the said meetings. Precinct 1, Bentley Academy Gymnasium, 25 Memorial Drive. Uh, that's Ward 1, Precinct 1. Ward 1, Precinct 2, the community room at 135 Lafayette Street. Ward 2, both precincts 1 and 2, at the Community Life Center, 401 Bridge Street. Ward 3, both precincts 1 and 2, at Salem High School Auditorium, 77 Wilson Street. Ward 4, both precincts, Witchcraft High School Gymnasium, 1 Frederick Street. Ward 5, both precincts, Salton Stall School Auditorium, 211 Lafayette Street. Ward 6, both precincts, Bay School Gymnasium, 53 Liberty Hill Avenue. Ward 7, both precincts, Salem State Enterprise Center, 121 Loring Avenue. And be it further ordered that the polls of the said meetings be open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. and that the city clerk be instructed to post this notice as required by law. I move for the adoption of this order. Under discussion. No discussion. Any further discussion? See none. On the motion of Councilor Pernoski adopting the election order of March 28th for a special election, all those in favor? All those opposed? So about it. Petitions. Councilor Marcelo. We have a list of um, public guides and taxi operators. Okay, Councilor Marcelo. Thank you, President Dominguez. I move these be granted. Under discussion? No discussion. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion of Councilor Marcelo, all those in favor? Opposed? Talk about it. Further, further petitions? We have one tag day application. Councilor Marcelo. Thank you, President. I move that these be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. Any discussion? No discussion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on the motion of Councilor Marcelo, all those in favor? Opposed? So it. Further petitions? We have four claims. Councilor Marcello. Thank you, President. I move that these be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. Under discussion? No discussion. Any further discussion? Seeing none on the motion of Councilor Marcello. All those in favor? All those opposed? Got it. We have a one drain layer contract operator license. Councilor Marcello. Thank you, President. I move this be granted. Under discussion? No discussion. Any further discussion? Seeing none on the motion of Councilor Marcello. All those in favor? 
Paulus, so about it. We'll finish business. For the second passage of the zoning ordinance and map amendment to rezone the parcel at 67 Derby Street. Councilor Marcello. Thank you, President. I move that this be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. Under discussion. Thank you, President. Um, I, since this is zoning, I think it's wise if we have all of the councilors present. Um, we're down two councilors tonight, and um, although they did vote on the first passage, um, I think in this case we have some time, and I would prefer to wait for the full council to vote on this. Any further discussion? Seeing none, and the motion of Councilor Marcello. All those in favor? Let's oppose. So I'll do it. Councilor Marcella. I move for adjournment. Is this any second? <laughs> and the motion of Councilor Marcello for adjournment. Are those in favor? Let's oppose. So about it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>